Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the 5th grade standard 1.1 and this topics under the study island lesson titled patterns. So basically we're going to be looking at patterns in graphs, in tables, in pictures, and in numbers. And so as we're going through, please be taking notes so that you can have those to refer back to when you're trying these problems on your own. And then also you can if I go too fast, just pause the video so you can rewind and get caught back up. And you can even pause at the beginning of the question, work the problem out yourself, see what you get as an answer, and then use the video to check your work. And make sure you're showing all of your work, and that way you can see where it is that you went wrong, or where it is that you're getting everything 100% right. And that can help you learn also. So I'm so glad that you are joining us today, and let's go ahead and take some notes. In these problems, we're going to be looking at a number pattern and a picture pattern. A number pattern is a sequence of numbers arranged according to the rule or formula. And then a picture um, pattern is going to have a bunch of pictures, and you're going to want to look at the change of the number of objects in each picture. And then you want to look to see if the size changes in order to figure out what the pattern is with pictures. And here's some examples of picture patterns. So here I'm looking at these pictures and the triangles and the circles, they all seem the same, the, stay the same size as you look at each object. So I'm going to look at these green circles on the top and I'm going to count them. So there's four green circles on the top and there's two on the bottom. And then I'm going to count how many triangles I have. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen triangles. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same for the second picture. We still have four circles on the top. Now I have six circles on the bottom. And when I count up my triangles, now there's just 13 triangles. And so I'm going to do the same with num the number three object. On the circles, I now have eight on the top. And then when I count up the circles on the bottom, I have six. And then I count up my triangles, and now there's just 11 triangles. So now I need to see if I can find the pattern for how many circles there are on top, how many triangles there are, and how many circles on the bottom. So if I look at just the circles on the top first, there's four, four, and then it goes to eight. So it looks like it stays the same for two, and then it increases by four. So if it's going to stay the same, stay the same, increase by four, then my next one is going to stay the same. So my fourth one, I'm going to need eight circles on top. Now if I look at the circles on the bottom, it goes two, then it increases by four, and then it stays the same. So increase by four, stay the same, increase by four would be my next one. So 6 plus 4 is 10, so that means in the I'm going to have 10 circles in the fourth picture. And then my triangles, I have 15, then 13, then 11. It's decreasing by 2 each time. So 11 minus 2 is 9. That means I'm going to have 9 triangles in the middle. So now I'm looking for the picture that has 8 circles on the top, nine triangles in the middle, and ten circles on the bottom. And the only picture that has that amount for each the top, middle, and bottom is choice D, so that's going to be my final answer. Number two here asks, in the pattern above, how many circles will be in diagram one? So what, how many circles do I start with? So I'm going to start with by counting each of the number of circles in two, three, and four. So in circle two here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles. In circle number three, I have one, two, three, four, five circles. And then in picture number four, I have one, two, three circles. So I look at the pattern here. It's going seven, five, three. It's decreasing by two each time. So what minus two will get me to seven? If I have nine circles in the beginning, that's going to show the pattern of minus two each time. So 
So my final answer here is going to be D, nine circles in diagram one. The table below shows the amount of money Jake earns based on the number of sandwiches he sells. In dollars, how much would Jake earn if he sold 18 sandwiches? So when we're looking at the table, we want to see first if we can find a pattern between the two columns. So here, 10 to 30. Well, I can add 20 or I could multiply by 3. Let's see if one of these is the same for 12 to 36. Well, if I take 12 plus 20, that gets me 22. But 12 times 3 is 36. So this one works for times 3 also. And then you just want to check the rest of them. 14 times 3 is 42. 12 times, I'm sorry, 16 times 3 is 48. So that means if we take 18 times 3, that's going to give us our answer. So here, 3 times 8 is 4, 24, carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 2 is 5. So that means they're going to earn $54, which is choice B. The graph below shows the high and low temperatures recorded in the four months in 2007. Which statement below best describes the pattern shown by the graph? So here, they're looking at the pattern, and you notice that each of these says difference between high and low temperatures. And some of them increased and some of them decreased by certain amounts. So if I'm looking at the difference between the high and the low temperatures, I look here, and they're getting further and further apart each month. The high temperature is getting higher, and the low temperature is getting smaller. So that means the distance between them, the difference between them, is increasing every month. So I can go ahead and get rid of A and D choices because of this, they say decreasing. So now I'm going to look at, does it make more sense that they, each month they get 6 further apart or 12 further apart? And because these bars don't go up exactly, we're kind of going to guesstimate where each bar is and we're going to see if when we subtract those numbers if it's closer to 6 or 12 because it says best describes. So February that low there looks about 19 or 18 and then the high looks it looks pretty close to 30. So 18 minus 30 that's 12. So the difference there is when you subtract those is 12. So in March, the low, it looks about, you know, 13, 14, maybe 12. So we'll say that is 12. And then the high, it looks about 35, 36. And when I subtract those two numbers, I get 24. So it looks like the difference is increasing by 12 each month, because 12 plus 12 is 24. So let's go ahead and check April to see if it's close to 12 also. So the low in April, that looks about 8-ish. And then the high in April, if you look at that, that's about, I don't know, 42, 43. And if I subtract those two, that gives me 36, which also increases by 12. 12 plus 24 is 36. So that means C is going to be my final answer. Now if you had chosen a little bit different numbers here, your numbers would be a little bit different, but it would your difference would be closer to increasing by 12 than by 6. So that's why it says best describes, is because we can't be super accurate. This one says a fifth grade class is performing an experiment to find out whether a tomato plant or basil plant will be taller after 21 days. Below is the data the class has recorded for the first 14 days. If the plants keep growing at the same rate, which plant will be taller at the end of the experiment? So then you kind of have to think about, okay, if this line keeps going up at the same steepness, and this line keeps going up at the same steepness, eventually they're going to cross. And it looks like if we keep going out, 
16, 18, 20, 22. It looks like the, the basal line is going to get higher before we get to 21 days. So the basal plant will most likely be taller, which is choice B. Now we're looking at a list of numbers. It says, what is the rule for this sequence? So we have 25, 32, 39, 46, 53. So right away, I notice that all of the numbers continue to get bigger. So I'm going to look at what is, how much do they increase by each time? So go to 25 to 32, I have to increase by 7. To go from 32 to 39, I have to add 7. To go from 39 to 46, I also have to add 7. So it's probably going to be my pattern, but I'm going to go ahead and check it. And then to get from 46 to 53, I'm going to have to add 7 again. So that means that each number is 7 more than the previous number, which is choice D. In these following problems, we're going to be writing the rule for the pattern as an expression instead of as a sentence. So these work a little bit differently. You're going to be looking at, for the first term, that's when x equals 1, what would you do to 1 to get to 18? And then can, what could you do the same to 2 to get to 24? And then 3 and 30. So here I can look at my options and just try each one of them out. So the first one is saying if I have 12 and I multiply that times 1 and then subtract 6, will that get me into 18? Well, 12 times 1 is 12. 12 minus 6 is 6, so that does not get me to the first term 18, so it can't be A. So now I'm going to try B. I'm going to take 6 times 1 plus 12 and since I substituted in a 1, I'm hoping that gets me to that first term, 18. So 6 times 1 is 6, plus 12 is 18. So that one checks out. So now I'm going to try 2 to see if that gets me the second term of 24. So 6 times 2 plus 12. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. So that one checks out. So now I want to go ahead and check out 3 because they could be being tricky and making sure and give you one that works for 2 but not all 3. So I'm going to try it. The third term is what I'm going for here. So I'm hoping by substituting in a 3, I'm hoping to get 30. So 6 times 3 plus 12 and 6 times 3 is 18 plus 12 is 30. So that one checks out too. And so most likely if you get three to work, it's going to work out, but you can go ahead and try four also. So you're going to take six times four plus 12, and you're hoping that gets you to 36. Six times four is 24, and then 24 plus 12 is 36. So it checks out for all four terms. So that means a B is going to be my final answer. And if B hadn't been, you just have to keep working down through this solution, sol probable solutions. And then this last one is we're translating from a sentence that describes the pattern into an equation. So it says here, each number, and we're going to use N to represent some number we don't know, is, is always means an equal sign, and then 10 less than five times that number. Now remember, whenever you see a less than, that means when you write the equation, you're going to flip whatever is first in the words is going to be after your subtraction sign. And whatever is after your words is going to be in front of the subtraction sign. So I'm going to have a minus 10 and then five times that number. So five times that mystery number N is going to go in the big Beginning. I had to remember to flip it. So that means choice B is going to be my final answer. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.